earlier today, I made a mistake that I swore I would not make um, this year. Um, I, I refocused some of my New Year's resolutions earlier this year because we're at the beginning of a new decade. One of my weaknesses is when I'm interacting with somebody and they stop talking, I have a tendency to run my mouth to fill the gap. And um, the incident today wasn't the end of the world, but it made me realize, oh my God, I got to stop doing this before I really mess up. Um, what had happened was I had gone to my favorite grocery store. It, uh, I live in the Seattle area. We have a grocery store called Fred Meyer. And I had gone to the self-checkout machine, and I noticed one of the cashiers was about to clean all the machines with a cleaning solution. And I interrupted her and said, "Could you? I'm almost done. Could you uh, wait until I leave before cleaning? And... Um, she completely did not acknowledge me. She didn't. She, she, she walked back to her station and didn't clean the area, which is good. And um, I checked out and I said, thank you. And I left. No interaction. And uh, I turned around to say, uh, have a good day. And still no interaction. And I left. And I felt very uneasy. It was almost like the way I, the, the analogy I like to use is you're driving in your car and you get to a red light and you hit the brakes, you kind of almost expect the car to, to, to jolt back a little bit to, to come to a rest. And I was kind of waiting for that and it didn't come to a rest and it almost feels like a sense of unease. The other the other analogy I like to use is that you're kind of at a roller on a roller coaster and you're about to drop and it hangs in there. So my favorite roller coaster in the world is the Takabisha in Tokyo. There's a there's a, uh, a vertical climb, and then you hang about a hundred and I think it's a hundred and nine degree slope, and it hangs there for two three seconds, and then it drops. And I felt like when I was interacting with the cashier that I just kind of hung there. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I didn't lose anything, uh, but it it makes me realize how easy people get me to talk by just not talking. My guess is that. I was dealing with a teenage girl. She was probably 18, 19 years old. Maybe she likes me or something. She wants to get me to talk to understand me more. I don't know. Or she has some kind of ulterior reason. Um, or maybe she was just paying attention to something else. Maybe she was kind of daydreaming about something else. It happens. I don't think she had any evil intentions. Uh, but sometimes it works to my detriment. Um, a few years ago, I was working at a, a, a tech giant when my boss had this habit of um, not talking and um, he would say something that I should have done better and I would respond to him and he would just hang there. And the end result was that I would talk more and oftentimes almost incriminate myself that I did do something wrong. I remember during one of the performance reviews that he gave me, he had said that... Um, he said, blah, blah, blah. Andrew's response was, it, it began with something. And he, he left out the context, and which made the review look a lot different than what really transpired. Um, I ended up leaving that job because it got very uncomfortable toward the end. But I think part of the reason it got so uncomfortable was because I ran my mouth. Because I got uneasy about the silence. Um, a couple years ago... Um, I was I, I used to like to collect coins, and I would flip coins from one uh, person to another to try to make a buck. And um, I had a, a client of mine who, um, he, he was on the fence about buying some coin, and um, he became awkwardly silent, and I started, I, I, I ran my mouth, and I mistakenly brought up how much I had paid for those coins. I just ran my mouth a little bit too much. Uh, long story short, I lost the sale. Uh, three years ago, I went out to buy a car. I'm still driving that car. It's a Mitsubishi Lancer. And just as, just as I was about to close the sale, I went to call my insurance agent to make sure I could get the insurance on it. And there was a little bit of a snag um, because I had to... I know it sounds kind of embarrassing, but I had to retake my driving test because of an accident I got into uh, a year before that. The, the dealer, he really wanted to sell me the car, but now I was unsure, and he started to lower the price. And now I had to I, I had a serious decision I had to make. Did, did I feel comfortable about retaking the test and getting the license? Otherwise, I'd probably have to resell the car and probably take a significant bath on it. So I was kind of thinking in my head and doing the calculus in my head of whether or not I should buy this car. And he lowered the price by a good 500 bucks because I was just sitting there thinking. So that time, he ran his mouth.
And it makes me realize from all these circumstances that every time you run your mouth, you have a potential of having a tsunami of money just flowing out of your mouth. That's how I like to visualize it. Every time you open your mouth, pretend that there's like a toll for, for speaking, you know, just like, a, you know, a highway toll or something like that. Every time you open your mouth, money flows out of your mouth, and you got to make sure that whatever you're saying brings back at least that much money, if not ten times as much, and to, to really think before, uh, before you uh, commit to something like that. Thanks for, thanks for watching.